if we go far away from the weights so at our other extreme, so we're way out here now, so z much, much greater than z naught, uh, we have an approximate formula for w of z. It just goes like this um, and essentially increases with z, depends on the wavelength and the initial starting waist size. And r of z is proportional to z, as we would expect, because as we move very, very far away from this laser, um, it's going to look like a point source, which is going to put out a spherical wave with a curvature the distance you are from your spherical source. And we see, in fact, this does correspond to a spherical phase front. Um, also very far from the waist, the beam diverges or spreads out at an angle, essentially, theta right here. And I think I've made a mistake, so let me go ahead and fix that. I think, in fact, we need to describe this not as theta, but this angle as theta over 2, where theta would be the full spread of the beam. And theta over 2 is given by that formula right there. And you can see from this, for smaller wavelengths, as lambda gets smaller, the, the radiation gets more toward the blue rather than the red end of the spectrum, you're going to get less spread. And it's also going to depend on the waist size. Uh, larger waist sizes initially, larger W nodes, are going to give you less spread. And this is certainly um, in line with the uncertainty principle we studied back in Chapter 1 of the book. Uh, the difficult region is neither near nor far. That's the region where z is approximately equal to z naught. And you can see at this place, the waist size is approximately the square root of 2 w naught, so it's about 40% bigger than it started with. Um, the phase fronts aren't planar, and they're not spherical either. They're sort of in a transition period. And this, as I mentioned before, if you think of this as a Bode plot, it's where the plot goes from being a straight line and the beam size is independent of z, to increasing linearly with z. And uh, if you're in this region, you can't use any of the two approximations we talked about. You actually have to use the full equations and the calculations. So let's end this by doing some numbers. And let me go ahead and get uh, a black pen here to do some numbers. And let me make my pen size a little bit smaller to do calculations a little bit more easily. And so let's, let's take some typical numbers. Let's say lambda, the wavelength, is equal to 633 nanometers, which corresponds to red light. This is actually a helium neon laser. We call it a HENI. And a typical he helium neon laser, like the ones you're going to use in your optical tweezers projects, has a W naught of about 2 millimeters. So let's go ahead and do some calculations. First, let's calculate Z naught. And Z naught is given right up here. And this index of refraction in is equal to 1 because we're in free space. So I can effectively ignore it and drop it from the calculation. So we have pi, and hang with me here because I'm plugging things in on my calculator, times W naught squared. So I have 0 0.002 because I want to work in MKS units. So we have pi times 0 0.002 meters squared divided by 633 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And if I square the 2 millimeters, enter, and divide by 633, exponential 9, change sign, divide. Um, and if I didn't make any mistakes on this, as I certainly could, uh, the beam has to travel about 6.3 meters before it even really starts to diverge. Um, so, so a couple meters away from Heaney, the beam won't really have changed size, is what our calculation is showing us. Uh, let's say we want to do something like shine a helium neon laser on the moon, uh, and we want to know sort of what the angle it spreads out is. Well, well, certainly that's a fairly easy calculation to do. I can calculate the, the half angle of the beam here. And so let's go ahead and do that. Theta over 2 is lambda naught. Uh, I can drop the in because the in in vacuum errors is so close to 1, it doesn't matter. And if I calculate this as 633 times 10 to the minus 9 divided by pi and 0 0.002, let's see what I come up with. Almost done here. Um, I come up with 1 times 10 to the minus 4 radians. 
And remember, these calculations when you're working with things like this are always, always, always in radians. And so I have to multiply it by 180 and divide by pi to get degrees. And so this is going to give me 5.8 times 10 to the minus 3 degrees, which is a really freaking small angle. So you can see a typical helium neon laser, even with a fairly small beam waist, is going to give me a beam that doesn't diverge very much at all. Um, notice that if I double the size of my waist, W naught, my angle halves. And if I double the size of my waist, Z naught goes up by W naught squared. So Z naught goes up by 4. So with a W naught of 4 millimeters, uh, Z naught jumps up to about 25 meters of distance. Uh, let's do one more calculation here before we call it a day. Um, what's a good calculation to? Ah, okay, let's, let's calculate the intensity. Um, and I know W naught for my field is 2 millimeters. Um, how big is the beam actually going to appear to the eye? Because the eye measures intensity rather than field. And so let's draw, and we know that our beam in profile has a shape like this. That's what the Gaussian is. And if red's our electric field, here's e to the minus 1 right there. And of course, this distance out is W naught. Um, if we look at intensity, and let's change our ink color, and let's use uh, maybe green for intensity. Uh, the intensity is proportional to the magnitude of the field squared. And so we know that the intensity profile is going to be more sharply peaked than that. And certainly, it's going to appear to have a a different 1 over E point. So let's go ahead and do that calculation really quickly. Um, so we know E is equal, ignoring all the phase factors and things like that, E to the minus R squared over W naught squared. I is proportional to magnitude of E squared. And so if I don't have any imaginary parts or negative parts, so I can ignore the absolute value sign there. And I know if I square an exponential, I get e to the minus 2 r squared over w naught squared. And I want to know where minus 2 r squared over w naught squared is equal to 1, or is equal to minus 1, because that's going to be my 1 over e point. And I find, in fact, that that um, r is equal to square root of w naught over 2, or r is equal, excuse me, I'm doing too much there. Uh, let's see, r squared is w naught squared over 2, so r is going to be equal to w naught over the square root of 2. And so, in fact, um, for the intensity profile of the beam, the place where I see the 1 over E point is uh, essentially 70%, or 1 over the square root of 2, of where the 1 over E point appears for the field. And I think that's all you need for this. Those give you some examples of doing calculations with Gaussian beams, and we'll move on and do some more Gaussian beam calculations next time.